administrator now, and I am a project manager of this project from City of Fort Worth, TPW. And I have with us our communication specialist, Jeff Allen, our engineer on the project, Aaron Freaky, Taylor Jordan, and our contractor on the project, Noel Sanchez from Fain Group. So uh, with the current COVID-19 situation, we have kind of moved this meeting from an in-person format to an online WebEx format. So I have a few things to go over before we start the meeting. And that's just the general rules of the online meeting. It's that um, we request everyone to have their phones or their uh, laptops on mute uh, while uh, we, I present uh, the presentation. And also um, type their questions in the chat, chat box so that I can answer them all at the end of the presentation. So let's get started with it. So this is a community meeting for a 2018 bond sidewalk improvements year two project. And uh, they include sidewalk on Donnelly Avenue and San Juanes Street. The limits on Donnelly Avenue are from Merrick Street to Hewland Street and that on San Juanet are from I-30 to Driscoll. In my presentation today, I'll be covering the project background, the construction schedule, the point of contact, and some frequently asked questions for a sidewalk project. So coming to the project background, we generally have the sidewalk projects to improve walkability and also uh, uh, have a part of our active transportation network. Uh, city of Fort Worth is a blue zone city and we, um, we uh, encourage our residents to walk and uh, uh, so sidewalk is an important part to improve the walkability. We include pedestrian elements like sidewalks and uh, curb ramps at the intersections um, to be ADA compatible. This project is funded by 2018 bond program. And we had a public meeting during design phase on February 25th at M1 Carter Center at Lena Pope. The estimated construction cost for this project is 600,000. This map shows the alignment of sidewalk for the project. So as we can see, it's on Dan Donnelly Avenue from Merrick Street to Hewland Street and on Sanguinet Street from I-30 to Driscoll Boulevard. Um, we changed the alignment on both Donnelly as well as Sanguinet. It's not completely on one side of the street. So the alignment changes based on uh, the constructability issues. Um, sorry, uh, I think someone unmute themselves. Hello? Okay, moving on. Uh, previous public meeting was conducted on February 21st, and we had 23 attendees in attendance. Some of the questions that we um, had in the previous public meeting where, uh, how is it determined to have a sidewalk on either side of the street? So we generally considered factors like constructability, places where we had less existing trees, less utilities, and less grade differences, so that the sidewalk could be constructed without affecting the existing landscaping um, as much as possible. So we considered the places with the least impact on the existing uh, landscaping. The second question that we had was, will the landscaping be removed if it's between the back of curb and the roadway right of way? So we generally preferred not to remove the landscaping and we tried to bring the sidewalk back to four feet or three and a half feet in the places where we had large trees. But there were some places where the landscaping was right next to back of curb and it had to be removed um, to have the sidewalk installed. But in such situations, we are providing the landowners or the property owners with uh, similar plantings and it could be planted somewhere else in their, on their property. 
The next question was, will there be a continuous sidewalk on one side of the street on San Unit? So like I said earlier, we don't have the sidewalk on same site on both San Unit as well as Donnelly. Uh, we would be shifting sites, but we would be providing crosswalks and uh, curb ramps to provide the connectivity between the shifting sites on the street. Um, the next one is on Sangunet Street behind the shopping center, will the fence and shrubs be removed? So we have enough space behind the shrubs and we won't be impacting the shrubs at all. Uh, we have enough space for the five feet sidewalk without impacting the shrubs. Coming to the project schedule, we are currently in bid and award phase. Uh, we are currently executing our contract with the contractor. And we have some utility relocations on progress. Those are like on court utility relocation there on Sanguinet and Atmos relocation on South Sanguinet. So um, our construction is kind of depend upon the utility relocations, uh, when the utility relocations complete. So uh, according to our schedule, we are planning on executing our contract by late summer 2020 and start construction in fall 2020 but uh, almost like late September or early October. And the estimated start uh, construction duration is around six months. Uh, our contractor will be starting construction on Donnelly and then moving to Sanguinet. Uh, this is the last part of our presentation. Uh, here I'll cover some frequently asked questions that we generally get for our sidewalk project. So the first question is, what is the typical width of the proposed sidewalk? So according to ADA, uh, it's generally five feet when a sidewalk is detached from the curb and it's six feet when the sidewalk is back of curb. But in cases where we have trees and utilities, um, we try to bring it back to four feet, but then it's always advisable to bring it back to five feet as soon as possible. The next question is, are we impacting any driveways in the project? If so, will there be any access to the property during driveway construction? Uh, we will be impacting multiple driveways uh, during this project just to match the ADA requirements of 2% cross slope. So in that case, we would be replacing one panel at a time and will provide continuous access to the property. The next question is, will existing irrigation systems or grass will be impacted with this project? So yes, again, uh, there will be an impact to irrigation system and grass during construction, but uh, we already have an item in the contract for our contractor to replace back the sod, as well as the irrigation system, existing irrigation system to the pre-existing conditions. The next one is, will the construction material and equipment be left on site during construction? Uh, yes, our contractor will be leaving the materials and equipment on site during construction. Um, however, the site will be cleaned at the end of every day's work and the travel lanes will be reopened at the end of day's work. The next one is, what will be done if the yards are too high compared to the sidewalk? So in such cases where the yard is too steep and too high uh, compared to the roadway level, in such cases we provide a retaining wall uh, back of sidewalk to match the grade. The last question is, will there be any road closures? So there won't be any complete road closures at any time during the construction, but there would be partial road closures like uh, closure on one way and the details would be provided um, for construction for every part of construction. The road closures would be just for a block or so and the details would be provided by the contractor. So here is the point of contact for the contractor. It's Noel Sanchez from the FAME group and here's his phone number and email ID. And if you have any questions, you could always contact me. Uh, my email ID and phone number is given over here. Also, our contractor would be providing a door hangers for one week notice before we start construction so that all the residents would be notified uh, for the start of construction one week prior 
to the start of construction. That is all I have. Thank you all for attending the meeting. Please let me know if you have any questions. So it looks like we have uh, just a couple questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, what if the landscaping that the city provides to replace the existing landscaping, what if it does not match or it's not a close match to the existing landscaping? Uh, so as soon as we have the contract executed with the contractor, we will be having a meeting on site with the resident um, where we are removing the landscaping to show them with the pictures of what we are proposing to be replaced. We would have like two or three options for them to select. So um, whatever they select would be planted. Okay, another question uh, was, why can the sidewalk not move to the other side of San Juan, um, probably near Kenley Street on the south part of San Juan? Um, I think near Kenley Street, we had multiple utilities that were in conflict and there were multiple driveways that were too small uh, to accommodate a sidewalk. I think that was an issue of having um, those are the points that were considered on selecting the other side of Sanguinet for the sidewalk. Okay, and it looks like there's one more question. Um, is there a break in the sidewalk on San Bonnet? Um It looks like it is not continuous. Uh, actually, no, it's continuous. Let me uh, bring back that slide. So, uh, it's not a break over here. We already have an existing sidewalk in this location. So we are just connecting the new sidewalk to the existing sidewalk. Uh, we do not have any breaks on Sanguinet and Donnelly um, between the limits. Okay, and then um, another question. Uh, is it possible for the city to move the existing landscaping for the owner? Um, Yes and no, both. Uh, I think it would be mostly depend upon, I mean, we would have to get a direction from our arborist. So we had some of the landscaping that we spoke with our arborist about and the arborist wasn't confident that um, relocating the existing landscaping, uh, the plants would survive if we relocate them because some of them were cacti and uh, according to our arborist, the deep, uh, the roots are too deep for those kind of plants, and those plants generally don't survive if you try to relocate them. We would surely try to relocate them if that the, if that's what the resident wants, but um, I'm not sure if that survives. And that's the reason we are willing to provide a similar plant or similar tree to the property owner. Okay, and I, I think that's all the questions. Um, so, Sharetta, we we have two we have two call in users. Okay. Um, I'm mm -hmm. gonna go up, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute them and uh, so they can ask a question. Sure. Um, over the phone since they don't have uh, access to chat. Sure. Okay, if you're a call in user uh, just on the phone, uh, I have you unmuted if you have any questions. Okay, I didn't hear anything, Shweta, so. Um, me neither. Okay, we did like have we another have... question All come right. in on chat, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry, um, yeah, one more question. So uh, they just wanted to verify, um, so is the arborist going to meet with the owner prior to starting the construction? Uh, yes, we will have the arborist and the contractor uh, meet with the residents before starting construction. Uh, so, Jeff, do we have any other callers? Uh, nope, that's it. 
Okay. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Actually, we are done pretty quickly, so um, I prefer to wait for some more time to just see if anyone else has any questions. Shweta, I also wanted to thank Council Member Zeta for joining us today. She is on the call with us. Uh, thank you, Zeta. Uh, we have another question. Um, it says, uh, how far in advance will the contractor and the arborist come to the residence? Um, so actually we would be providing a uh, one week notice to all the residents that whenever we we'll, uh, we are about to start construction but for the residents where we are removing the landscaping we would be meeting quite before that so once we have the pre-construction meeting and uh, we know what the schedule for construction is i'll have our contractor and our artist come out and meet the resident and i'll be there too so uh, we'll meet them sometime maybe mid September or late September. Okay, and then uh, can you go ahead and put the names back up for the contacts so that you uh, can yeah, sure. see them? Um, another question, uh, how will we be notified to meet with the arborist? Um, so actually we already have the email address of all the residents. Uh, so we will reach out to the residents prior to uh, scheduling a meeting with them on site. Um, someone else asked, um, how do you have the email addresses? Uh, they don't think that they provided them to you. Um, I'm not, um, they could email me to my email address and then I'll have their contact. Okay. Uh, someone has requested uh, approval to annotate the presentation. I'm not sure who it is. I'll have to look into that one, Shweta, and see if our video team can do that. Uh, okay, so do I need to decline it or? Um, I don't know, it was an option right there to annotate. Uh, yes, but then I lose control of the presentation. Someone else will have control over the presentation. We do have another question that came in. Okay. Um, yeah, it says, uh, will they be notified? Um, I mean, uh, residents or the property owners, I'm not sure. 
The residents will be surely notified seven days in advance for, before the start of construction, and the residents would be notified uh, about the meeting with the arborist and the contractor prior to us scheduling a meeting with the resident. Okay, so they'll be notified if they do not have an email address on file? Uh, yes, they could send me their contact or phone number or just call me in you know, on my cell phone and I'll be reaching out to them to check their availability for us to schedule a meeting with them. If they already don't, uh, if I already don't have a contact uh, number or email with them. Do we have any further questions? Looks like we have one more. Uh, yep, there's one more. Um, they asked if they do not want to be notified by email, will you notify them by mail instead? Uh, we generally do the mail only for the formal notices. I'm not sure if we could do mail for the informal notices for scheduling a meeting. But they could message so as me a, or like call me. Shweta, as a, as a reminder, if, if there's not any um, landscaping that we're removing, they would just get a normal door hanger notice a week ahead. Yes. Uh, that they're, yeah, that will have contact information. Mm -hmm. Do we have any more questions? Looks like we are good. So thank you all again for joining the meeting and taking time to hear the presentation. So we will be uh, in contact with you once we have a schedule to start construction and we will be notifying everyone uh, before the start of construction. And thank you all for joining the meeting today.